basically a response video to uh, Pyro, uh, Pyro, um, and Nick too. Um, but anyway, um, so what's more on this determinism versus whatever uh, magicism um, argument? Um, Pyro is contending, you know, that most physicists um, think that there's such a thing as real randomness in the universe, and I don't think that's true. I think they concede that we have to accept that there are um, um, precisenesses in the reality that we can't observe. And so I'll go to even Matt's used this one before, this uncertainty principle, and Pyro's certainly thrown it out there before. And, um, you, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with what the reality is. It has to do with our limitations in observing reality. And so the whole thing of quantum mechanics, I mean, the whole word quantum basically means that what has changed in physics is the realization that you can't split photons realistically, that you can't create a one one thousandth photon and shoot it at a big photon and then, you know, shoot a whole bunch of them at a, a big photon and then be able to resolve the image of the big photon. And we don't have anything, to, we don't have anything to reflect off of objects this small. And that's, a, that's what all this quantum is a concession to, is that, yes, it, yes, in regular physics, in the regular physics math, theoretically, there was no limitation. There was no absolute frequency or absolute velocity except for the speed of light and blah, blah, blah. So there was, there was, there was, limita there was, there was no limitation. So you could basically split a photon into millions of little pieces and throw the millions of little pieces at a photon, and then you could resolve the image of the photon. Okay, quantum mechanics is basically saying, no, you can't do that. Okay, so now I have a problem here, because now we have to throw these big giant chunks of matter at the photon. And so now there's only certain ways we can see something. So when we, when we go to look at something, um, we can't see both its velocity and its position at the same time. Because what's going to happen in the realistic world, if we try to do it realistically, is that the matter we throw at the photon to look at where it is, is going to change its position, okay? And the same is going to happen with velocity. If we, if we're, if we, if we we're throwing these big objects, we're going to end up in influencing its velocity by, to, to determine its position. So, so we can't, we can't do both of those things at the same time. I don't think you can do velocity with one image anyway. So that's kind of impractical anyway, but you have to take velocity at two different positions and all that other stuff. So we can't really know these two things theoretically anyway at the same moment in time. Uh, we can't. Uh, measure them. Um, and so that's what quantum physics is basically about. It's about, it's about acknowledging that there isn't a divisible pro, uh, uh, a particle anymore. Okay, that there's not the smallest of the smallest of the smallest. You know, it doesn't go forever. It stops. There's a point where we can't make a smaller particle. And so that's the limitation. And that, that influences everything that we do to these particles. Every time we throw a quantum of energy at something, we're going to mess it up. So any experiment we do where we have to throw a quantum of energy at something to observe it, we're going to create an influence. And that's basically what comes, that's basically what this two slit experiment comes down to too, is the same kind of problem is being created. Because our instrument to measure wh which slit that the photon is going through or the electron is influencing the electron or the photon. And, and that's a, you know, that's the limitation in classical physics or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so that's what all this is based on. And so this, in this math, you know, quantum mechanics, the math is basically um, kind of like algebra or something. Okay, it's another way of of discerning a reality. Okay, so you can now, you know, it's like you could tell how how tall something is that's three miles away. Yeah, if you know how far away it is, and you can get an image of it in an angle, so you can measure the angle, uh, and then you can multiply that by the distance, and you can you can figure out the height of the thing that's you know three miles away, and so you can use this abstract way of obtaining information, and that's all quantum mechanics allows you to do. It's basically error math. It's basically math that puts into the equation the fact that we can't do the measurement accurately. So it puts into the equation the fact that instead of knowing exactly where the photon is, we can only uh, approximate its location because it's only through the approximation that we don't destroy the photon. 
So we have to be so subtle in how we detect its presence that we are going to have an inaccurate detection. We're not going to know exactly where it is. And so quantum mechanics basically allows all that error to be accepted because in the end it conserves all the energy. And in the end all it's doing is making um, allowances for the variable, the, the inaccuracy of the um, initial starting position um, in the equation. And, and it's, you know, so, so this is not, it, it, is, it is really, it is taking it a step further, it's turning it into the unicorn when you start getting into the multi-dimension stuff and all the rest of this crap because that really has nothing to do with any of the practical utility of the math itself. And, and like I said, and, and the, whole, the, whole, the whole field of endeavor is basically just a concession as I stated, to the fact that we can't perform these experiments, number one, most of them, and even if we're going to, if we're going to have a theoretical experiment, it has to exist within the context of what we know to be the reality. And so now that we know it to be the reality that matter is confined to this quantum, that you can't cut the quantum into pieces, um, you need some sort of math that accepts that limitation and that's really what it's all about so anyway the bottom line is is that look when we're talking about our brain um, you know because Nick's talking about like you know instead of just having this you know I don't like the idea of three vocabularies you know one for the tea time and one for reality I mean I think that should be, just be reality not futuristic talk I mean people in reality now should be able to have futuristic talk. I mean, if you've got a theory about, um, you know, matter and um, how it interacts, then go ahead, throw it on the table. Um, but we really sh it really shouldn't be a separate vocabulary. Um, I don't think. I mean, we should, we should just have serious conversation and non-serious conversation. There shouldn't be some other category, future serious. I mean, that doesn't, I don't think, make much sense. Um, uh, the truth is what we're after and the truth is is that you know when matter was initiated on its course when it did its initial expansion um, the little bits of matter had a tendency to consolidate to complexify that's their tendency so that's like the first rule of matter um, in, in spite of um, certain other presumed principles uh, matter will behave certain ways in certain environments all right, but the uh, a fundamental principle is that when you just throw this stuff out there, it will tend, okay, to bang into each other, and they, it will complexify, and and that's all we are. So we are, you know, 10, 15 billions la years later. This is what matter turns into. It turns into closed systems, where the matter is trapped inside of a system. Um, that that is um, becomes very elaborate because there are mechanisms, biological mechanisms that have been developed over four billion years of evolution through a DNA blueprint um, that allow the matter to be trapped, to be um, uh, um, caught in a complexity arrangement, and that's what we are. And so I think everything that pops in and out of us is, is just something getting introduced into the complexity, and then what we do is just how that complexity is is um, uh, automated um, but it's it's it is all part of a big giant pool of energy um, but we are specifically refined by rules of chemical interaction and then when it comes to the biology we become we, we, we were defined by the rules of this DNA evolution and then we become confined by the rules of a rational mind, a mind that's been developed, a brain system that has been developed over evolution, through evolution, to be reasonable. That's its intent. Its intent is to create a reasonable organism that's able to interact in its environment in, in ways that are constructive to its survival. Okay? It's not, it's not, it wasn't, our brain is not built to be stupid. It isn't built to be intelligent. It is built to become more and more intelligent. And so then we have this whole thing of once we can store information outside of ourselves and, and feed ourselves packets of more complexity, uh, prepackaged complexity, books, for example, um, you know, we can m more order our own complexity and it becomes um, more nuanced. And, uh, but that's all this is, okay? It's not, 
There's no magic anywhere in it. There's no randomness. There's no, there's no real um, roll of the dice. It just isn't there. Einstein was right. There's no God rolling dice. Okay? It's mechanical systems. Period. And I'm almost out of time, so that was probably a good point to end, but I'll just babble on a little more. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just not as, I mean, I just don't like when Nick calls it just some swirly, bouncy thing, because it's not a swirly, bouncing thing. The matter complexifies under ordered rules, and one of the ordered rules that we have complexified under is the rule that our biological organism has to be, con has to be more competitive and has to survive, and it has to go through a rigor, it has to go survive a test. And it is through that testing that it is refined and required to, to, um, to, to run a very specific mission. And we are the reasoning machine. That's what we have. Okay, other animals have big teeth or big muscles. We have the brain. And so that's what our complexity takes advantage of to make us still here. That's why we're here.